Charlani here. Thanks so much for tuning in to Charlani TV. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you the best ever soft dinner rolls. My mother-in-law shared this recipe with me 25 years ago, and this is my teeny bit tweaked up version of what I think is basically perfection when it comes to fresh baked homemade rolls. The ingredients are super simple. It's mostly about technique and giving it the time it needs to proof and rise. So when you put them into your oven, your rolls come out perfect every single time. So here I'm proofing the yeast and listen, this is gonna like triple quadruple in size. So use a really large measuring cup. I use warm water, not enough to kill the yeast, but warm enough to activate it. And I add in my sugar and I stir it up and then I let it just sit and let it do its thing. Next up is getting our milk to scald, which basically means boiling, but you don't want to boil it over. I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like here in a second. So in the meantime, this is right out of the refrigerator cubes of butter. I use two cups. I'm going to put the recipe down below for you so you've got it. But I do think that it's important to have your butter, and I'll explain why here in a minute. But make sure your butter comes right out of the refrigerator. Stick it into your mixing bowl um, because it's going to activate with that boiling milk, and then it's going to give you that perfect temperature. I'm using extra virgin olive oil. You can use vegetable oil, canola oil, and you just wanna coat your bowl that you're gonna let your bread rise in. Coat it really well so it kinda just falls right out of it. And this is what I'm talking about when I say boiling the milk. You don't wanna get it to where it boils over because this goes really quick. So make sure you keep your eye on it, but it's about right here where you pull it off the heat so that it doesn't bubble over, and then you stick it right into your butter. Now, when you add your boiling milk into the cold refrigerator temp butter, it's going to take a few minutes for all of your butter to melt. And you wanna make sure that before you add any other ingredients that your butter is completely melted. But I know a lot of times we wanna hurry that process up, but be patient with this. Let it melt on its own. You can cut it up to kind of speed up that melting process, but you want your milk and your butter to be warm. And I think the combination of the cold butter with the hot milk brings it to a perfect temperature. Now I start by adding in half a cup at a time of the flour. And here's the thing. In this first process, I'm gonna add in probably three to four cups of flour, but it kind of just depends. Every time I do this, I'm adding in a little bit more flour, sometimes a little bit of less flour. It just depends on the weather, it depends on how much milk exactly you've put in, it depends on the moisture in the air. So it's not a perfect recipe in that you will know exactly, like I put in exactly this much. It's just kind of, the more you do it, the more you'll get to see what the dough kind of looks like and the texture and all that good stuff. So I add in the eggs one at a time. I add in one egg and then I sprinkle in some flour. I add in another egg, sprinkle in some more flour and get everything mixed up really well. I always just use my mixer at a low speed whenever I'm making bread. I don't know if it would make a difference if you use the higher speed, but for me, low is the way to go. So once everything is well mixed, this is when I switch out my mixing blade and I put in my dough hook. Now this is where the process gets really fun and this is also where you'll kind of find your way with what your dough is supposed to look like, kind of what that texture is gonna be. And when you start to see that it pulls away from the sides of the bowl, that's when you know that it's drying out and it's at this point that I add in the yeast. 
And here you're gonna see when I was talking about the triple quadrupling in size, the yeast has proofed beautifully and it gets so big, but this is what activated yeast looks like. It's awesome. So you're adding this into your dough mixture and then you just keep going and you keep adding in a little bit more flour um, as needed. And it's about at this point where you can really see it start to form a ball. It's still very, I mean, it needs a lot more flour here, but it's at this point that I actually take it out of, or off of the mixture, I should say, and I add it onto my flour uh, board, and I'm adding in more flour, and this is just where that texture and what the dough feels like comes into play. So here I've got my floured board. I just use my hands and make sure you take your rings off because this dough gets into everything. I also like playing with food with my hands. I don't know, I think just cooking and baking with your hands like this adds just a little bit of extra love into it. But this is where you just, I like to pull from the sides, pull up from the back, and the flour that I have on my board, I just use to kind of dry out the top and just get it really mixed in and incorporated. This is where you just go in and you're just folding and pulling in more flour until you get that consistent dough, which is just a big, thick, it should be a little tiny bit sticky, but it shouldn't be wet. I hope that that makes sense, but this dough is absolutely perfect. You can pick it up, it doesn't stick to your hands, and it also isn't super dry. It's okay for your dough for that first rise to be a little bit moist. You want that moisture in there, it's fine. And then I cover it with some saran wrap, and you can see that I create a little bit of a concave there, because what we want, this dough should double in size, and you want it to be able to lift up that saran wrap. If you had it really tight, then sometimes there's not gonna be a place for your dough to expand, and you wanna make sure you give it plenty of room. So I've set it out of the way, I've covered it with a dark towel so we can give it a couple of hours to let it rise. And it's at this point where it should be about double in size. And this batch is absolutely perfect. It looks good, it smells good, it has doubled in size, and that is exactly what we want. So I'm flouring my board again, and this is where that oil came in handy because it falls right out of your bowl, nothing is left in there, and this is where I'm just folding again, and this is where I fold and I squeeze all the air out. So when it did its first rise, a lot of air was put into it, that's why it expanded to double in size, and now you kind of want to break up those air pockets. So that's what I do here is I kind of just squeeze it in, fold in, squeeze, fold in, squeeze, and you just do it over and over and over again. So now I'm getting my rolls onto my sheet. I do 12 to a sheet. These aren't going to double in size, but they will get a little bigger. And then once you get them into the oven after this second rise, they're going to get a little bit bigger that way too. I have made rolls where I put them and I butt them like right up next to each other, but I prefer them to be spread apart like that. And then I had a little bit of extra, so I just decided to do a fun braid. We're gonna put some garlic butter on it and just side note, spoiler alert, it came out amazing. <laughs> I let my second rise happen in my closet because there's zero draft, there's no place for anything to like disrupt the second rise process, but we let them rise for two more hours and then I get them into the oven. 375 for about 15 to 17 minutes and they come out absolutely perfect. And this is usually when people start wandering into the kitchen if they're not already in here to just take a little bit of a taste test to make sure that they came out okay. And let me tell you, these did. They were absolutely perfect. They were buttery, soft, and oh, they just, they were absolutely amazing. 
So this is the recipe that I use every single Thanksgiving and Christmas and any other special occasion or big family gathering. These rolls are a family staple and we absolutely love them. I love how my bread braid came out so good. And next time I'm gonna add some minced garlic into the Kerrygold garlic butter, but this was amazing. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you try this recipe, please come back and tell me how your rolls came out. If you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you've not subscribed to Charlani TV, I would love it if you did. Bye guys.